Hello artists! For this week's art activity, we're going to be making a Build-A-Bot robot flipbook. I'm going to show you how just folding a few pieces of paper and making a few simple cuts can turn your paper into a flipbook where we can design robots and we can flip through mixing and matching all the bodies, the heads, and the legs. For this lesson, you are going to need two pieces of paper. Any type of paper is fine. Just make sure that it's the same size. You're going to need a pencil for drawing, an eraser in case you make a mistake. If you would like to outline your drawing before you begin, you will need a black marker and you need a pair of scissors for the few cuts that we need when making our flipbook. As for coloring, all you need are crayons and some markers. And if you would rather use colored pencils, that would be fine too. So let's grab all our materials and get ready to design some robots. So first up in our lesson is that we have to actually fold the paper and create the flip book before we can design the robots. So I'm going to show you two ways. If you only have one piece of paper, that's fine. You're going to simply take your one piece of paper and you're going to fold it in half as if you were making a birthday card. You're going to try your best to line up the edges and once you see that they're matching, you can take your fingers and press down along the fold. You're going to want to press a few times to make sure that that fold stays right in place because you don't want your flip book to open while you are working. And then what you're gonna do is you have to make two cuts so that we can make the sections to flip. So I would hold my paper tight in my hands and I'm gonna start on the loose side, that's the side that's opened, and I'm gonna go about halfway down or maybe a third down because we're going to do two cuts so if you wanted to you could take your pencil kind of use your finger where you want the first one to end maybe mark it with a pencil come down a little bit more and do the same so now you know exactly where you want to make your cuts with your scissors you're holding it tight on the fold you're taking your scissors in your other hand and you're going to cut straight across and you are going to stop before you get to the fold because you do not want it to open and break. Go down to your second marking and do the exact same thing. Stop before you get to the fold. Now, if you have one piece of paper, that's fine. You're only gonna be able to mix and match though, two robots, one on this side and then one on the next. That's fine, but it'll give you two robots. If you wanna be able to mix and match more robots, then you should have two pieces of paper. So I'm gonna take two pieces of paper, fold it one at a time as if I'm making a birthday card, match the edges, press down nice and tight along the fold a few times so it doesn't open. Do the same steps with my second piece. And before I cut anything, I'm gonna take that second folded piece of paper and I'm going to slip it inside the first, like I'm making a booklet. Keep them together while you're working. I'll make my mark for my first cut. Come down a little more for the second. Keep the papers together. And I'm gonna cut across and stop before I get to the fold. Same thing on the second marking. Cut across and stop before I get to the fold. Now, because I use two pieces of paper, this is gonna let me flip through and mix and match about four robots. One piece of paper gives you two, this is going to give you four. So the only difference is the amount of paper you use decides how many robots you're gonna have in your flip book. Now you could leave it just the way it is, your flip book. You don't have to staple it. You don't have to tape it. You don't have to glue it. You're just gonna have to be a little bit careful when you're working to make sure that it stays together. But if you would like to, you could just take a stapler, if you have one, and you could staple it right along the end as if you were stapling a book, which I know some of you have made little booklets before either for fun or in class, and that'll keep it together when you're working. Very easy. If you don't have a stapler, you could always grab a piece of tape. Simple scotch tape is all you need. 
and you could simply put some tape on the edge of the book. I'm gonna go right to the folds and I'm gonna make it hang off a little bit. And then I flip it over and fold the tape on the other side. That'll help bind it like a book has binding so that when I flip through, it won't fall apart. So those are two possibilities that you can do to make sure that your flip book stays together. Your choice, and if you don't have tape or a stapler, then you don't have to worry about it. You could always just leave it folded one inside the other when you were working. Now that you have your flip book made, you're going to get to the designing part of your robots. So you have three sections to your flip book. One, two, three, top, middle, bottom. The top of your flip book is gonna be for the head of your robot. The middle section will be for the body and the arms. And the bottom section will be for the legs and the feet. And you get to decide what you want your robots to look like. Now on the PowerPoint attached to the project, there's lots of different examples of different shapes and body parts and arms and legs and buttons and gears that you can use to mix and match and design your robot. Of course, you can always come up with your own. You can always look up pictures for drawing robots online while you're working to help you out. What I like to do when I'm thinking of robots, because I like to come up with my own imaginary robots, I like to start with geometric shapes. Geometric shapes are the shapes we use all the time, not just in math, but in art as well, when we are drawing and creating our projects. Geometric shapes are shapes that can be measured. They have rules on how to make them. For example, three sides to a triangle, four even sides to a square. So if I think about my geometric shapes, I could think about how I want to mix and match them and put them together to design a robot. So for example, maybe I decide that for my head of my robot, I wanna make a triangle and my head belongs in the first box. Now I'm gonna give you a little tip. If your head doesn't go all the way down to the cut line, you might wanna make a neck. You should have all of your robot parts in each section, make it all the way down to the cut line. The reason why you want that to happen because that way later on when you're done and you're flipping through and mixing matching your robots in your book, it'll line up better if they all fill up the section and go all the way down from the top of the line to the bottom of the line. So that's a good thing to think about. If you fill up the whole section when you're working, they will mix and match better when you're using your flip book. Maybe you give your robot antennas. Maybe you use a rectangle for the mouth and a zigzag, it'll look like teeth. Half circles for eyes. You can get as creative as you want with your robot. Maybe I make a oval for the body. The second section is the body and the arms. So let's see, circles. Claws for hands. Robots have lots of gears and buttons. And the last box are for legs and feet. So maybe I make this robot, instead of actually having legs, maybe I give him a wheel. And there you go. There's my first robot on my first page. It has the head, the body and arms in the second section, and the bottom section are the legs and the feet. And for this robot, I decided to give him wheels instead of feet. And once I have my first robot done, I would just flip the pages open. One. Two. And three. And then in my next section, I would design a brand new robot. Head. 
body and arms, legs and feet. You have to design the whole robots first before you can mix and match. So I would just keep going through each section until all of my robots are done. Remember, if you used one piece of paper, you'll have two robots to make. If you use two pieces of paper, you get to design four. So you mix and match your shapes, use your imagination, and build some robots. of my robots designed and drawn in each part of my flipbook, I can flip through and I can start mixing and matching the all the different parts. And as I flip through, I can change the heads, I can change the bodies and the legs. Instead of just having two or four robots, when you mix and match, you can actually get a whole bunch just by flipping through your book. It's fun to see what different types of drawings it's always a little bit of a surprise what your robot's going to look like when you flip through and see them with all of the different parts. When you're done with your drawing, if you would like to take a marker and trace what you drew, you can. If not, you can go right to coloring and all you need for coloring are some simple crayons, markers, or colored pencils. So in this example that's all done, I went through, I colored each of my robots one section at a time. And then when I was done, I could mix and match and see the same robots with all of the different colors as I flipped through and all of the different parts of the body. If you don't wanna use coloring, the other possibility is you could use shading to maybe make your robot look a little 3D. So if you would rather use pencil shading in your drawing, you would simply take the pencil that you were using with before, that you were drawing with, and you would go along the edge of your robot. And we practice this a little bit in other lessons. Our shadows are created by doing a dark, medium, and light value. So I would press down harder with my pencil along the edge. Remember, I just color back and forth and our shadow is only on one side of my picture, not the whole part of the robot. So once you decide where your side your shadows are gonna be on, you stay on that side and you would stay on that side for your entire flip book. Remember medium value, I press a little bit lighter so that my shadows blend. And once you finish with the medium, this value so you barely touch your paper and add the lightest part of the shadow at the end. If you do it correctly you should be able to see the shadow transition from dark to medium to light. And I can even do it along the edge of the arm. If you are choosing to use shading with your pencil in your flip book, you need to take your time, make sure you do this correctly and completely. Because if you are not adding any other color except the pencil shading, then you need to make it look as good as you possibly can. And if you're choosing to stick with the shading, just make sure that you do it throughout your flip book so that your robots would match no matter how you turned the book and flipped the page, okay? So shading or coloring, it's up to you. 
Take your time designing your robots. Remember there's examples in the PowerPoint attached with your project. Take a look and use them. If you need to look up some ideas online while you're working, that's perfectly fine. But the best robots come from your own imagination, just starting with some simple geometric shapes. Good luck on your flipbooks. Can't wait to see what they look like when they are done.